हेलो फ्रेंड्स व्हाट्स अप सो लेट इज कंटिन्यू द जीएसटी टॉपिक इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस व्हाट आर द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ जीएसटी एंड व्हाट आर डिफरेंट चैलेंजेस ऑफ जीएसटी एज अ टैक्स व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट लिमिटेशंस ऑफ जीएसटी सो बाय द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ जीएसटी सी जी एस टी एस जी एस टी दिस आर द कम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ जी एस टी आई जी एस टी एट्सेट्रा सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन दिस हाउ इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट हैपन्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी विल स्टडी वॉट आर द डिफरेंट बेनिफिट्स दैट द जी एस टी हैज गिवन टू अवर इकोनॉमी सो लेट एस बिगिन सो सी फ्रेंड फर्स्ट देर आर सम बेनिफिट्स विच आर वेरी क्लीशेड काइंड ऑफ स्टफ ओके which are very common commonly known any common man can uh, you know just say this that both goods and services are covered okay so it there are standard rates so there are no, not much confusions so it has covered it has subsumed a lot of central and state taxes uh, which cover both goods and services so input tax credit it has become easy cascading effect has reduced there are standard rates applicable the same rates in all the states throughout the country so it is indeed a one nation one tax kind of structure this is a benefit that it has given then there are minimum exemptions that are allowed so you know there are not many exemptions that are allowed in this particular tax structure so that uh, you know the tax base of the economy has increased government revenue has increased uh, so uh, you know and then it is also good for doing business business expansion is possible uh jobs have increased gdp will increase tax base increase as i have already explained to you fiscal deficit will reduce because if the government revenue increases then the fiscal deficit will decrease so all these are very uh, you know uh, obvious benefits of gst but there are some more important benefits uh, which i would like to discuss in detail with you uh, now what are these so first of all as i had told you in the previous video that gst especially the igst system where which is for the interstate movement of good okay interstate transactions the system is igst now how igst has led to efficient logistics how logistic industry has become more efficient how warehousing consolidation has happened different firms and company now they can have warehouse in just one location and then they can do the business how this has been possible we will see in detail now then ancillaryization uh, outsourcing has increased ancillaryization meaning that uh, you know if there is a company uh, say which produces cars so this company can directly outsource you know making of tires and tubes and maybe glass okay then uh, metal body so all these uh, ancillary parts it can outsource it to other companies and it can buy it from them because there is 100% input subsidy now okay there is no tax on tax so ancillaryization has become more possible so it has led to increase in msme industries okay small small and medium size industries can develop they can become the ancillary industries to the main industry to the big industries and they can supply the parts or you know very small small inputs to the main industry so this way uh, you know uh, more businesses have come outsourcing has increased so that more people can be engaged more jobs have been created this has happened same base computation so uh, uh, as we know that the state tax and the central tax now are applied on the same cost on the same base this also i'll explain to you how this has happened previously in the very first video we had seen that uh you know there is a vat which was imposed on excise also in the previous system in the very old system so this was a tax on tax so excise is a central tax and vat was a state tax so the base for on which the excise duty was imposed was different and the vat the state tax uh, which was imposed on uh, you know cost plus excise it was different so there was more tax this again i'll explain to you below and zero rated exports so exports have been zero rated in gst system there is a 100% input tax credit for uh, you know people who are exporting their goods so these are four main benefits of gst now i'll explain to you in detail each one of them uh, how will igst make logistics efficient okay so how this will happen i'll i'll tell you see before what used to happen before igst or before the gst system there was a central sales tax on the interstate movement of good right interstate movement this i have already told you 
whenever there was an interstate sale for example from maharashtra to gujarat or from uh, delhi to bihar this kind of so whenever this kind of uh, transactions used to happen a central sales tax used to be levied okay and this central sales tax was levied for commerce purpose basically for sale and purchase commerce means sale and purchase so there was a seller and there was a purchaser okay and there used to be an invoice so on invoice it used to be mentioned who is the seller who is the purchaser and whether it is a commerce purpose or not so central sales tax would be levied only when the goods were moving from one state to the other for the commerce purpose for the sale and purchase purpose and not for the transport purpose for example there is a company which has a warehouse warehouse in maharashtra and it also has a warehouse in rajasthan okay so now if it wants to move some of its goods from its warehouse in maharashtra to its warehouse in rajasthan for example say toyota company so toyota wants to move its innova cars from maharashtra go down to the rajasthan go down so when it was just a movement for uh, you know of one company one form uh, in two different states through the state then uh, central sales tax would not be levied because it was not a sales it was just a movement so in order to uh, you know save taxes what these companies big companies used to do that you know they would big corporates would set up their warehouses in every state so they will have a warehouse in every state okay so whenever even if they are selling it uh, you know from say maharashtra to gujarat if they are selling some uh, some of their product so they would show that you know we are just transporting it from our one warehouse to another warehouse and from here they would sell it okay from the gujarat warehouse that that is how they used to use the loophole in the system and uh, you know a lot of tax evasion used to happen like that so to avoid tax liability they used to set up warehouses in every state and now to set up warehouse in every state is not possible for every company it is possible only for big corporates for very big companies now with gst what happens whether you are transporting it for uh, you know commerce purpose or you are transporting it just for shifting from one place to another for transport purpose uh, you know you have to pay the gst okay because there is 100% input tax credit there is a unified wallet there is just one tax okay igst whether it is for commerce purpose or transport purpose so warehousing consolidation has become possible now warehousing consolidate consolidation meaning the companies can choose the most optim optimal location for its warehousing so company abhi decide kar sakti hai ki kahan pe humko warehouse rakhna chahiye bahut zyada warehouse ka kharcha unko nahi uthana padega because see warehouses come with a lot of cost it comes with a cost of land electricity manpower everything right so all this cost can be reduced now and warehousing consolidation is possible but msmes could not do it all this you know ha having a warehouse in every state was not possible for msme because these are small companies they don't have sufficient revenues they don't have sufficient funds to do all these things so there was a tax burden on msme and it was more so it was not good for msmes msmes were suffering because of the old system also there were checkpoints on different you know state borders so briberies were happening okay corruption was happening because of all this so uh, all these were the problem and now with gst we have seen that with the igst system you know uh, this system has become very smooth and efficient now warehousing consolidation is possible and you know you just cannot fool the system whether you do it for transport purpose or commerce purpose you have to pay the igst and you will get the uh, you know tax credit depending on where the final consumption of that good is happening so this is one of the very important benefits of gst okay now we have to need now we have to pay the gst regardless of whether the sale is within or outside the state this is now the system now we'll see how the same base computation works okay how the same base computation works so we will first see how before it was happening okay before gst so for example the manufacturing cost is rupees 10000 and there is a 10% excise so 1000 rupees is the excise that would be levied so for example if a good is manufactured in a manufacturing company so as i have already explained to you excise duty is an is a duty on manufacturing say if it is 10% so 10% of the manufacturing cost will be 1000 rupees it will go to the central government now this invoice when it comes to the state uh, you know after manufacturing when they, when they have to sell it uh, so the cost to the seller will be 11000 rupees because 1000 plus excise duty and then the vat of 12% will be imposed on the 
uh, on, on, on the final sale so 12 percent on 11,000 will be imposed it will be 1320 so in this we will see that you know this 12 percent is also getting imposed on this excise duty this is a tax on tax this i have already explained to you in the first video of gst you can see that so here the base of computation of tax are different for central government it is 10,000 for state government it is 11,000 so the base is different and and the total tax that has to be paid for this product is 1000 plus 1320 1000 is the excise duty 1320 is the state vat so total tax paid in this case is 2320 2320 rupees now after gst how this system has happened so basically the manufacturing cost 10000 now you know under this there is no excise there is no vat there is just one gst and gst is again cgst plus sgst let us assume that it is the same computation 10 percent 12 percent so if the central tax is again 10 percent state gst is 12 percent see you can say that you know sgst cgst component are the same rate it is just for the example that i am telling you uh, just to show you that how this tax liability reduces so if G cgst is 10 percent sgst is 12 percent so it will be computed on the same manufacturing cost so 10 percent of 10,000 is 1000 and 12 percent of 10,000 is 1200 rupees so the total tax paid in this case is 2200 now you compare these two okay so initially the total tax that was to be paid was 2320 now it is only 2200 so basically the tax liability has reduced and uh, you know the same base computation so on the same base on the same cost the both central and state taxes are getting calculated so this is one of the benefits of gst now let us see what are the different challenges of gst okay gst also has some of the challenges in india so gst is a tax which is there in many different countries also and in most of the countries you will see that there is just one rate tax okay there is just one rate of gst we will see in the next video uh, what different rates of gst are there in india but uh, for the moment let me tell you that there are four slabs of gst in india okay four slabs of gst so these four slabs of gst sometimes results into a lot of confusion as to which item will go into which slab and uh, you know sometimes we also question the logic as to why this item is in this slab and why that item is in that slab so that kind of thing is there uh, again and again revision has to be done we will see that uh, but in most of the countries there is just one single rate of gst now the single rate of gst meaning there is no confusion okay there is not much confusion there is the system is simple but if we were to have one rate of GST in our country, then the revenue neutral rate, revenue neutral rate meaning the, uh, you know, the rate of GST at which the revenues before GST, okay, revenues before GST would be same as revenues after GST. Okay, so central government, whatever revenue it was receiving before the GST system, before there were a lot of different taxes, I have already explained to you. So whatever the revenue it was receiving before GST, if it had to get the same revenue after GST with GST also, then the revenue neutral rate of GST would be 26 to 27%. So you can see that this is very high rate of uh, GST. And, and the reason behind this is that lot of commodities are still outside GST. So for example, I have told you petrol, liquor, land, electricity, they are still out of GST. So since these commodities are not in the GST net, the other commodities are there in gst so the revenue neutral rate would be 26 to 27 percent which is very high now if if there is such a high revenue neutral rate then definitely our domestic company will lose its its competitiveness right because in foreign the gst rates are low so their manufacturing costs are low their overall tax burden is low so you know our domestic industry cannot compete so domestic industry will definitely ruin foreign products will be more cheap so we will buy more of foreign products even our exports will decrease so domestic industries can ruin then competitive age to asian giants so there are many asian giants asian countries like china vietnam philippines indonesia so you know they will get a competitive edge in manufacturing evasion will increase smuggling will increase okay evasion will also increase because you know now uh, since it is such a high tax rate so people will want to evade this tax people will not want to so they will do a lot of uh, you know a sell without invoicing and all those things will happen and it will become more regressive more regressive meaning the poor people will face the more tax burden i have already explained to you the meaning of regressive tax so if such a high rate of tax are paid on different commodities and poor people will suffer the more so it will become a more regressive tax system 
so this is one of the challenge of gst ultimately slowly slowly we have to move to one rate structure okay that is our final goal that is our that should be our ultimate goal but it is uh, some challenge in our country so slowly slowly we will figure out how to reach that one rate structure you know without losing our revenue now second thing is that gst is a destination based tax i have already told you so wherever the consumption is happening the tax is getting paid to that state so the states will lose vat and other indirect taxes so what is happening for example initially say for example states like maharashtra gujarat okay karnataka these were the producing state lot of industries were present in these states even today lot of industries are present in this state uh, previously what used to happen this sales tax and vat tax this used to get imposed and uh, you know collected by the producing state so wherever the sale is happening wherever the sale is happening those states used to get those taxes but now wherever the consumption is happening that state gets the tax okay that state gets the tax share so it is a destination based tax and this product producer states are losing because of it so there was a lot of opposition from this producer states like maharashtra gujarat karnataka tamil nadu so for that there was a compensation cess which is levied on uh, you know lot of different items uh, it was it, it was supposed to be levied for 2 years to compensate the producer states so cess as i have already told you this is a extra tax on tax okay this is extra tax on the additional tax so it was levied on some of the selected goods mainly the sin goods sin goods meaning again the goods which are not good for the society which are considered to be harmful to the society at large so on such goods a cess was imposed additional tax burden was uh, given on the sin goods and whatever that additional cess was being collected it was being compensated to the producer states so for example initially maharashtra used to collect say for example 3 lakh crore of okay uh, vat and other and other taxes other taxes now with gst it is it is able to collect only 2.5 lakh crore so this remaining 50000 crore will be paid from this compensation cess to maharashtra to become the same uh, you know to to get the same revenue uh, before gst so that was the scheme of this compensation cess then lot of registration issues see gst completely online system right it you have to file three times a month three times a month the company has to file its uh, returns its invoices it has to be uploaded lot of registration issue we have to manage a huge database our our country is a very big country there are you know 1.4 billion people so many transactions are happening uh, every day so uh, to manage such a big database it is a very big challenge so the solution was to that was a gst network gstn system it was built okay and petroleum is still out okay cascading continues uh, petroleum products are still out so whatever the companies are paying on petroleum products for example for transportation they are paying on petrol diesel so you know those charges are included in the cost of production and again you are imposing gst on that cost of production so there is a kind of tax on tax so uh, you know cascading is still continuing but it has reduced to a large extent but let us see how we can bring petroleum and liquor and other products also within the gst net now let us uh, study what is this gst and gst network uh, which is a database management system basically it is a non profit non government organization okay it is not for profit not government organization it is a special purpose vehicle it is called a special purpose vehicle special purpose vehicle meaning it is a body which is established by a government for some special purpose to to perform a special task so it is a special purpose vehicle and what is the special task that it is doing it is doing the it management and database management of gst okay this is the task that it is assigned with now who are the owners of gstn okay as we have seen it is a non profit non government organization so it must be owned by somebody okay so it is owned by government of india 24.5% state governments 24.5% so this total 49% share is of the government okay 51% share is of the different uh, stakeholders so therefore it is a non government organization it is not completely owned by the government government of india 24.5 state government 24.5 combined and who are the other owners lic housing finance limited it is 11% uh, it has 11% stake in it icici bank has 10% hdfc has 10% hdfc bank has 10% okay hdfc and hdfc bank are two different companies you should know this okay now i think they have combined now i think uh, they have become just hdfc bank combined uh, very recently they have combined you you can check this on internet 
बट वेन दिस जी एस टी एन वॉज फॉर्म दिस वर टू डिफरेंट कंपनीज एंड यू नो दे वर होल्डिंग टेन टेन परसेंट एंड देन देर वॉज अ नेशनल स्टॉक एक्सचेंज स्ट्रेटेजिक इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपनी एन एस सी स्ट्रेटेजिक इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपनी इट वॉज होल्डिंग टेन परसेंट सो दिस इज द ओनरशिप ऑफ जी एस टी एन यू डोंट नीड टू एक्जैक्टली रिमेंबर दिस बट इफ आई एम टेलिंग यू इफ यू वॉच इन द वीडियो एंड इफ अ क्वेश्चन कम्स इन यू पी एस सी देन यू नो समेयर इन द बैक ऑफ यूर माइंड इन यूर सबकॉन्शियस माइंड यू विल रिमेंबर दैट इट इज़ नॉट अ हंड्रेड परसेंट ओन गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इट इज़ फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट ओन बाई द गवर्मेंट ऑफ इंडियन स्टेट गवर्नमेंट कंबाइंड एंड देर आर अदर स्टेक होल्डर्स ऑल्सो ओके नाउ वॉट इट डज इट इट इज़ अ डेटा बेस मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम सो इट हैंडल्स द इन्वाइसेज वॉट एवर द इन्वाइसेज यू नो द बिजनेस मैन आर अपलोडिंग देन रजिस्ट्रेशन फॉर जी एस टी रिफंड ओके डिपेंडिंग ऑन द इन्वाइसेज दे ऑल्सो हैव टू डू द टैक्स रिफंड पेमेंट्स ऑफ यू नो दिस रिटर्न एवरीथिंग सो ऑल दिस थिंग्स आर मैनेज बाई द जी एस टी एन सो इन दिस वीडियो वी हैव स्टडीड यू नो अबाउट डिफरेंट चैलेंजेस ऑफ जी एस टी डिफरेंट बेनिफिट्स ऑफ जी एस टी ऑल्सो अबाउट द जी एस टी एन नेटवर्क ओके आई हैव एक्सप्लेन टू यू इन ब्रीफ अबाउट ऑल दिस थिंग्स इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल कंटिन्यू विद जी एस टी एंड वील सी यू नो वॉट डिफरेंट आइटम्स आर प्लेसड इन टू यू नो वॉट डिफरेंट स्लैब रेट्स एंड वॉट आर द डिफरेंट रेट्स ऑफ जी एस टी इन आवर कंट्री एंड यू नो विद दैट वी विल एंड द जी एस टी टॉपिक थैंक यू